David Seymour's tweet about the tangi in all Portiki is a masterclass in colonial discourse. He said what's happened in Oportiki over the past four days is despicable. The people of Oportiki are being terrorised by the subhuman actions of weak individuals unable to solve their problems like civilised members of society. To give some context, Seymour's tweet refers to the funeral gathering for a recently murdered gang leader, Stephen Rota Tayatini. Tayatini was a beloved figure in his community, described as a good family man who worked seriously hard to help make changes in the methamphetamine harm space. Many people, including gang members, travelled to attend the multi-day funeral. The local iwi community services and the police collaborated to accommodate the event in the small town, and two schools decided to close for a couple of days. The mayor, who attended the tangi with school and iwi leaders, reported that they were welcomed by gang members and that there was mutual respect between them. He criticised the media for hyping up the rivalry and gang war when it wasn't the reality on the ground. He reminded everyone that those wearing patches are still members of our community and they are people. And yet, certain media outlets and politicians went on to act as if they were not. Gangs are an especially popular target among these actors. This is because gangs in New Zealand are a direct result of colonial violence. A government inquiry found that 80 to 90 percent of the mongrel mob and black power gang members had been in state so-called care as children, where they faced severe abuse, discrimination and alienation. In other words, the colonial state is the gang that started them all. And people like Tayatini are striving to break the cycle of trauma in their communities. But people like Seymour don't want that. That's because gangs provide a useful scapegoat for societal issues and allows colonizers to perpetuate racist ideas about Māori. Instead of supporting healing, colonizing discourse seeks to blame the harms of colonization on what they argue is an inherent deficiency within the colonized. This is then used as a justification for further colonial violence and control. Seymour's tweet systematically devalues the victim, his family and other mourners by depriving them of empathy and recognition as people. Designating certain groups as less than human is a classic colonial tactic used throughout history to justify violence. When Seymour speaks of the people being terrorised by subhuman actions, he creates a distinction between those who are deemed fully human and those who fall into a lesser subhuman category. This is reinforced with his use of terrorize, a term which was used by US propaganda to otherize people and justify war. The idea is to paint the group as inferior and therefore unworthy of basic rights. As decolonial thinkers have long described, the colonial worldview creates a superior human image against which all others are deemed inferior. The master is a wealthy, able-bodied, straight, white, male human. All other people, animals and forms of life are deemed inferior to varying degrees. Seymour is dipping into a deeply ingrained idea which has been perpetuated for hundreds of years to justify global domination. When he says that individuals are weak and unable to solve their problems, as well as blaming colonial violence on its victims, this paternalistic language implies that colonizers need to intervene or fix the colonized. These individuals, he says, are not like civilized members of society, invoking the narrative of colonization as a mission to bring civilization and enlightenment to indigenous people, who are portrayed as inferior savages. This aligns with Seymour's belief that colonization was good for Māori. What's interesting is that we're never actually told who the enemy is. Gangs are the obvious one, but the real unnamed enemy is Māori. By referring to a group that due to colonization is overrepresented by Māori and using language associated with the denigration of indigenous people, Seymour is able to push white supremacist ideology without referring to race. This rhetoric supports the ACT Party policy of seeking to erase the right to Māori self-determination by redefining te tiriti o waitangi. After all, the implication is that these are uncivilised, inferior people who are in need of control and assimilation into colonial society. Seymour's tweet not only reflects a disturbing colonial worldview, but also highlights the ongoing otherization and scapegoating of Māori communities.